Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Libba Khang and this is Top 10 Evil Pastors of Africa. In South Africa alone, there are 200,000 Christian pastors, but I can bet that two out of the 200,000 is really called to be a true servant of God. Starting off at number 10, we have Pastor Sayangore, who is a Zimbabwean pastor with quite a large congregation. He is known for having the God Almighty that created the heavens and the earth on speed dial. Is this heaven? Is it heaven? I have a woman here. What do you have to say about her? Ah. Oh, I should ask her who is Sibo? Sibo. Who is Sibo? Oh. Guys, I personally do not believe in this. I don't believe that someone can talk to God directly with an actual phone, like an actual cell phone. I don't believe that. At number nine, we have Prophet Alf Lukau, who is well known for raising people from the dead. You must have a supernatural talent to be able to do this. I know, right? Unbelievable. Watch this. Commanding life. Rise up! Yes! Come on! Later on, we discovered that everything was a lie, as some people that know this man say that they saw him on the days when he was supposedly in the morgue. People such as neighbors, employers, and friends. Turns out this man was actually also working for Prophet Alf Lukau. It is really sad to see how people are being deceived like this. Moving right along, number eight, we have the famous prophet Hubert Angel, who is also known for being the ambassador of Zimbabwe. Everything seemed to be going well until Al Jazeera, a popular news outlet, exposed Prophet Angel for being a gold smuggler, also known as the Gold Mafia. At number seven, we have Pastor Lesejo Daniel, who is known for transforming grass into the body of Christ. I know, it sounds like I made all this up, so watch this and comment down below and let me know what you think. From above. Wake up! Stand up! Stand up! Upright! Attention! Close your mouth! Okay, I see food outside. Okay, go and eat. Go and eat. Go eat outside. Go quickly. Eat quickly. It is also alleged that he was also seen holding a long snake in church and also made some of the congregation eat a snake. Imagine. At number six, we have Pastor Litabo Rabalajo, who was apparently under the impression that the congregation have insects in their eyes and started dooming people's faces in front of the whole congregation and the whole world. When asked to comment on SABC News, this is what he has to say. For more on this, let's speak to the Prophet himself. Letabo Rabaloha is on the line. Prophet, thanks for joining us. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Talk to me about the, the comments. What is your response to the comments made by the ACDP that uh, self-styled prophets abuse congregations? Yeah, 
you know what, man? Um, many are ashamed of the gospel that they preach. You see? Um, that is why you see them not not practicing the other side of the gospel because this is the practical path. You see? Um, and we are led by the Spirit, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel that I preach. You see? This is the gospel of Christ. It is also alleged that he apparently turned a woman blind with this doom stunt. I just hope that woman is much better now. Pastor Rabalajo has been found guilty with five charges of assault with intent to do bodily harm and contravening the Agricultural Stock Remedies Act after the Limpopo Health Department opened a case against him. Coming in hot at number five, we have the one and only Prophet Bushiri. Now, Prophet Bushiri is not just a prophet hunty. It is alleged that he is also a scammer. He is well known for deceiving thousands of people where he made people to believe that he was building a massive place of worship, only to find that it was all a lie. He allegedly transported 15 million rand out of South Africa in his private jet. SABC News had an interesting conversation with him and this is what he had to say. You bought your daughter um, a, a, a million rand car, yet there are thousands of impoverished members of your church in South Africa. There are thousands of impoverished members of a church in Malawi. How do you justify that? There's no justification in buying something for your child. I don't even think you can justify why you, you, you bought your child uh, a toy or anything else. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So you but can, but, you can but I'm talking about the, the financial state of many of your, can, of your congregants in South Africa. They're impoverished. They take loans to pay 5,000 rent to consult with you. I they think, pay loans to I come think, to your church. <laughs> Some of them are even yeah, impoverished. You are right. But, but you, I are, think you, you, are, are, you are spending you, their money to buy no, their million money. rent. No, 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 no. Bushiri fled South Africa after being charged with fraud and money laundering involving 102 million rand, which is the equivalent of $5.1 million today. It is alleged that he raped someone and forced the family of the victim to take a bribe to get them to keep quiet. Their response to this was that Bashiri is a dangerous man. And I feel like I've always seen the danger in his eyes. Mr. Bashiri and his wife Mary have really made their bed and I hope that they are ready to lay in it. This is just the beginning. At number four, we have Prophet Bazooka and Nana Poku, and I'm placing them in the same parts because the lens that these two are willing to go to for money really baffles me. These two prophets are allegedly cultists, rapists, and murderers. They allegedly perform fake miracles and have deceived many. I remember watching a video of Nana Poku behaving immorally in church where he slept on top of a woman and it honestly looked like he wanted to have sex with her. They were exposed for their lies on Moja Love on a show called Utando no Kolo where we see a mother weeping because of these two prophets. They allegedly took advantage of her daughter and sadly the daughter has passed away due to Prophet Bazooka and Nana Poku's involvement with this girl. It is also alleged that this young girl um, saw a snake in church and I think um, now we all know that, you know, when a person says they saw a snake in church, that church is usually involved in cult activities. So um, after she said that, um, she saw that she called Prophet Bazooka and Prophet Bazooka threatened her life um, and said that if you tell anyone, he will kill her, allegedly. Number three, we have Tim Omuzoto, who is a senior pastor of a Jesus Dominion International Church based in Durban, South Africa. He is currently in jail and awaiting trial since April 2017 at the Port Elizabeth High Court for rape and human trafficking. 
More than five prosecutors have recused themselves from this case. He is alleged to have groomed his victims and began molesting them from the age of 14. He is currently facing 63 charges of rape, human trafficking, and rat occurring. I wanted everyone in the house to be asleep when I walked out, but there was one lady who was still awake, and she was in the kitchen. She was busy uh, cleaning the kitchen. I decided at that moment, this is do or die. It's either I'm going to leave today or, you know, I'm stuck here. So I acted as if I didn't see her. I took the remote key, the one that opens the garage. I let myself out of the door. I quickly ran to my bag. I ran out of the gate. I told the cab driver to wait. Not in. This date maintains they have a watertight case. His trial was watched by a lot of South Africans and it trended during the time when it was on. Um, I don't know when they will be back in court again, but it seems like everything is just taking forever. I wish our justice system was quick, you know, to deal with criminals instead of just them still being, you know, treated like they really have rights. They don't. Number two is Bishop Bafana Zondo, who is the senior pastor of Rivers of Living Waters Church. He allegedly raped a woman and told her that one of her family members would die if she told anyone, whilst also promising to give her 75,000 rands for her silence. Apparently, the witness was 23 years old at the time of the incident. She told the court that in 2008, Zondo called her and requested a meeting. The woman said that she had known Zondo for many years as he used to visit her grandfather and was known to the family. But she was not a member of his church. After meeting and climbing in Zondo's vehicle, the woman allegedly asked where they were going, but received no response. Zondo allegedly drove the woman to a hotel near Southgate Mall and booked a room. After entering the room, it is alleged that Bishop Zondo told her to undress as he did the same. Zondo then allegedly raped her. The Rivers of Living Waters Ministry Bishop faces a string of rape charges, indecent assaults, and defeating the ends of justice. It is alleged that the incidents that he is accused of started in the 1980s and continued until 2018. So it turns out he allegedly raped a minor girl in Sibugeng who he forced the minor to play with his penis number of times. In 2013 and 2015, he allegedly raped two more women in Everton. It is also alleged that one of those women was raped on two different occasions. In 2015, he allegedly raped another woman either in or near his Johannesburg church. Like the list is clearly never ending and these are just the ones that came forward. What if there were women who were threatened or brought to harm in efforts to shut them up? I have so many questions. Let's check out an interview that he had with SABC News. Now here is Musoma and his colleagues decided to do this publicly. I don't say they should not do it, but not the way they did it. What The way they plan it, they plan it that should be a bloodbath in the country. This commission did this country injustice because they cannot repair what they've done to this community. And already some of our members have received the threats some of them now are going to divorce court as we speak because how are you going to feel if you hear that i've slept with your wife are you going to still trust your wife and your children are zombies knowing that they come from your loins how is the perception outside there about the family this church the aim of CRL Commission to publicize this, to 
to nations of the world it was to destroy me my family and this church and their families and their children now it is time to reveal our number one most evil pastor of africa and i think you guys already know who it is and no sin is greater than the other but this pastor really shook me beyond my wildest imagination at number one we have pastor paul mckenzie now pastor paul mckenzie is a man that a lot of people have come to hate his church good news international church is based in melindi kenya he has gained the title of worst killers in the nation's recent history he is accused of having encouraged his followers to starve to death since the beginning of april bodies have continued to be exhumed from the shakahala forest and at least 243 people have been found dead the judge in charge of his trial charged him with terrorism i do believe that this man is involved in a cult because i mean how can you just like let people starve to death and also cults involve um you know sacrifices so i think he was making a sacrifice when he ordered them you know to starve to death basically i remember also seeing um an air hostess trending on twitter um that she was also involved um in this church and she apparently sold her land and you know gave up so much for this church and only for her to just die like that it's just really really sad i really really hope that they lock him away in a dungeon or some place and throw away the key so that he never makes contact with any humans ever again he definitely is a terrorist all right guys now that is it for today's video thank you thank you so much for watching till the end please do not forget to like comment and subscribe to this channel so that i can bring out more content thank you